Okay, well, if, if it's all gone when, when we're done. <laughs> it, it's my fault. Huh? Oh, well, okay. Well, I guess we'll. I guess okay. you better get over there and get some. <laughs> yeah, I guess I better spoon don't, him up some for don't, later. Don't muzzle the ox here. <laughs> okay, well, uh, enjoy the, the, the goodies, uh, and I'll, I'll yeah, just go ahead and get started. And, uh, uh, you're welcome. <laughs> okay, well, let's, uh, let's have a word of prayer real quick. Yeah. Lord, we, uh, we thank you for our time together, and we do invite your presence so that uh, we can learn from you and uh, uh, live better lives and glorify you more. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, so uh, we've done the virtues class before, uh, say two or three years ago. Come in, Vicki. <laughs> And there's the, there's the dessert over there. <laughs> yeah, the, you can, um, via Glinda, we even have food. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, uh, and we have some handouts. Oh, okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so um, uh, this is the this is the book that's going to be our guide for this class, and uh, the picture of it's on your on that one handout that you have, and uh, the title of the book is On Reading Well, and the subtitle is Finding the Good Life Through Great Books, and uh, this is written by a lady named Karen Swallow Pryor. Uh, She's a PhD, and she's on the staff at Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary. So, and, and as we'll see as we go through this, this is written from an evangelical point of view. Okay, so, uh, so that's good. Now, on the, on the back of that same handout, um, you'll see a website there called Gutenberg.org. And... Uh, a lot of the books and stories that I'm going to refer to, uh, you can find them there at no cost. So you can just read them online or, or download them, however you prefer to do that. Put them on your Kindle, etc. Okay, so you don't, uh, we can, uh, you don't have to buy a whole lot of books. So the way she structured this, this book is... And, 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 and keep in mind that, that by profession, she's a literature professor, okay? Yeah. So... Probably read more books than us. <laughs> yeah, indeed. So uh, when, she, when she focuses on a particular virtue, she, she suggests that we read an entire book to go with it. Well, I haven't read all the books that she suggested. <laughs> but what I tried to do is I tried to find you know, maybe a short story uh, or an excerpt from a book that, that serves the same purpose. Okay, so that's, that's what that one handout is about. So uh, uh, we'll be referring to that as we go along. So uh, the, the whole idea of the virtues, uh, when I, I'm not sure what got me interested in these other than I remember uh, about 30 years ago, William Bennett published this book titled The Book of Virtues. Mm -hmm. And and it's really good. And he he did a similar thing to what Dr. Pryor did. Uh, he has stories and poems, etc. And he associates them with a, a list of virtues. Okay? So this is a, a, a good thing to to do as well. Now, the virtues he lists are different than the list we're going to study. 
okay? Because when we think about uh, virtues, we can think about them a couple of different ways. One is, it's like choosing between good and bad. That's, that's one way to think of it. Sinning, not sinning. That's another way to think of it. Uh, probably the, the, the way I prefer to think about it is it's, it's, uh, we're, we're going to strive for excellence. Okay? Can we do what? Strive for excellence. Okay, so we're, we're going to live better lives. And the, and the virtues are a way, by, by studying them, we're going to get better about living better lives. Okay, and, and more about that as we proceed here. So, uh, virtues and vices. How many of you remember watching the TV show Columbo? Mm -hmm. Everybody, <laughs> okay? Now, now, every episode was the same, right? Okay, the person who commits the murder is rich and powerful. <laughs> Right. No, no one average committed a murder on that TV show. They were all rich and powerful, <laughs> handsome and beautiful. Okay. So when, when average folks like us see someone that's rich and powerful, we do sort of, we tend to envy those people, right? You know, they have something I don't have. Envy or feel sorry for them. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. but I mean, but, but yeah. I mean, there's a natural propensity to say, well, boy, I wish I had a house that big, or I wish I had a car like that, etc. cetera. I, I, comes first. <laughs> <laughs> no, I look at that way, and they're not going to take it with them when they die. <laughs> <laughs> then but, everybody will right. be either but, to us is of six feet under. <laughs> right, but see, I mean, but that's the, that's the vice of envy, because that's a natural propensity we have. When we see somebody better off than us, we, boy, I wish I had. So that's, that's a vice, envy. And the, uh, but because they're so well off, we really want Columbo to bring them to justice. Okay? <laughs> and justice is another of the virtues that we're gonna study. Okay? Because we want justice. And again, this, this murderer, always prideful, arrogant, I'm smarter than you are. And, and, but who's the guy that undoes this really smart, prideful guy? It's the detective that drives the junkie car and wears the, 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 the wrinkled raincoat. <laughs> and, he's, and he just seems to stumble around. Just one more thing. <laughs> so, so he's, in many respects, he's a picture of humility and he's going against pride in this rich and powerful murderer, okay? So, so see, we, we know a lot about the virtues and the vices simply because we, we, we do them all the time, okay? So part of what we'll do in this class is we'll uh, define what these are so we understand them better, okay? Uh, <clears throat> so, um, back to the idea of, of virtues uh, be, being excellence. So another, uh, my daughter gave me this book and it's written by a retired admiral and, and he, he was much more successful in the Navy than I was because I didn't retire as an admiral. Name? <laughs> his name is William I, McRaven. I just sent out something today from him. Oh, okay, good, good. Mm -hmm. So so he wrote this, He another, I, I really liked another book that he wrote but this one he titled The Hero Code, okay? And he, I'll just give you a couple of sentences from his uh, intro. He said, this book is about heroes and the virtues they possess. Okay, so it's, it's about virtues. Mm -hmm. For most of us, we must learn how to bring forth these virtues. Okay, and that's, that's why we're here. We're gonna we're gonna get smarter about what the virtues are, and and put them into play in our lives. 
we need to see them in the lives of others and try to mirror them in ourselves. And that gets us back to this book because she uses books from literature, fiction, to, to illustrate the virtues and the vices so that we can, we can learn from that. Uh, we need to build those qualities through small steps that eventually become the foundation of our character. Okay, and his list of 10 is a little bit different than our list. Uh, there's some overlap, such as courage and humility. And again, it's, it's the same thing, but it's just packaged a little bit differently. Okay, but these, what he uses is uh, examples uh, from people, you know, actual people and, and some experience they had to demonstrate the, the different virtues, okay? But he tells us also that we can learn these things. Okay, and that's, that's what we're here for. Um, but again, it's, it's living our best life. So back to uh, Dr. Pryor's book, Literature embodies virtue, first by offering images of virtue in action, and second by offering the reader vicarious practice in exercising virtue. So as we read some story, oh yeah, I've, uh, I could... I, I can see how this person made a choice, and my, I might be inspired to make a similar choice. Mm. Okay? So, um, I'll give you the list of virtues that we're going to study. And this is in the second handout that you have. Um, there, are, there are four cardinal virtues. And we call them cardinal virtues because the other virtues hinge on these virtues. And they are prudence, temperance, justice, and courage. Okay? And we're going to start next week with prudence, uh, which Dr. Pryor says is the... Um, prudence is, is another word for practical wisdom, and this is the queen of the virtue. Okay? So it has a special status. After we finish the cardinal virtues, we go to the theological virtues. And if you remember 1 Corinthians 13, 13, three things abide, and they are faith, hope, and charity. Okay? Those are the theological virtues. Now, uh, these, these have their own category because it's, it's God living through us that, that we we manifest these virtues as, as we should. Okay, so it's not, it's not uh, just human effort. The There's theological a, virtues you're talking about. The theological mm -hmm. virtues, right. Mm -hmm. right. And again, there's, there's, there's differences in the categories, and as we study them, I think, I think you'll, you'll see that. The last group are called the heavenly virtues. These are things like charity, temperance, chastity, diligence, patience, kindness, humility. Now, these seven heavenly virtues stand in opposition to the seven deadly sins, which you may have heard of. Gluttony, envy, pride, wrath. Heavenly virtues, you can also see it's a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Yes, yes. And again, that's, you know, these are not, the, the, a lot of these things mesh together in different ways, okay? Um, but we are what we repeatedly do, okay? So, something I repeatedly do is my habit, and so that's one way to define who I am and who you are, is by the habits of your life right okay so um, we're gonna have a lot of stories in this class so so I've got a uh, here's a story uh, this is something that I remember hearing and I, I found it on the interwebs today so have you have you heard the story about the two wolves okay so here's here's a version of the story one evening, an old Cherokee told his grandson about a battle that goes on inside people. 
He said, my son, the battle is between two wolves inside all of us, or inside each of us. One is evil, anger. It is anger, envy, jealousy, sorrow, regret, greed, arrogance, self-pity, guilt, resentment, inferiority, lies, false pride, superiority, and ego. <coughs> okay. Like the vices. Okay. That's the natural man. <clears throat> the other is good. The other wolf. It is joy, peace, love, hope, serenity, humility, kindness, benevolence, empathy, generosity, truth, compassion, and faith. Okay, that's the virtues. The grandson thought about it for a minute and then asked his grandfather, which wolf wins? The one you feed most. The one you feed most, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so as we go through this, this class, if you can just think about the two wolves that are at war within yourself, that, that's a nice framework for for how to view these things, okay? You've heard that, you've heard the story before. Anybody else? Or the one that Paul tells about the two natures. Yes, yes. right, it's, 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 it's a retelling of the same thing, exactly. Right. Right. Okay, so that is... The Indian hadn't read that yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, he wasn't privy to that. Yeah. But, 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 you know, it's something you could conclude all by yourself, though, right? That's right. You yeah. could you could figure that out. Something okay. Only God can do. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Okay, so so you can view it a couple of different ways. Which wolf are you feeding? You know, what habits do I have? What is it that I repeatedly do? Okay. And I'll have another thought on that. And I do need help with time because I don't have a watch. So. What's, what's the time, Sam? What's that? What time Quarter to six. What time is it? Quarter till six. Good grief. Our, time's go our time is gone. <laughs> okay. Uh, really? Quarter to six? Mm -hmm. Well, we started, oh, we started at 5.30. Five five thirty. Yes. Five I'm, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, <laughs> yeah, don't panic yet. I was starting on... <laughs> we used to start on the hour. You believe okay. it because his time and my time were the same. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. Okay, all right, all right, all right. This is my you still got <laughs> when you do for see, <laughs> see, it's my habit to start on the hour. <laughs> <laughs> see, see how... You're feeding the wrong habit. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I fed the wrong wolf there. <laughs> okay, so... Um, a few more thoughts about... And again, we're this, this is our introductory lesson, so we're just trying to... To, to learn about the virtues and, and uh, about how we function. Okay, um, now we're going to refer to Aristotle and the four cardinal virtues. We get those from Aristotle, from his book on the ethics. Okay, and Aristotle's view was that excellence, in his case, living well. Uh, he translated into happiness. So, so as I make choices, according to Aristotle, I'm pursuing happiness. Okay, and that thought carries over into our own Declaration of Independence, right? Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Okay, so, so our founding fathers knew about this stuff. Um, but now, for, for a Christian... We, we, can view, we should view this slightly differently. And um, I know Doc has, uh, you were raised Catholic, right? No. You were not? Mm -mm. But you know about Catholic. Yes, because, you know, there were more. Right. You, so so we've, we've talked about this before, that mm -hmm. like in, a, in the Catholic tradition, they have the catechism. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you're... Yeah. Sorry. Now, now we as Baptists don't really embrace that so much, although I have found on the internet a Baptist catechism from way back when, the 1700s or something. So, oh, go ahead. No, just it's something the difference though in that is that uh, uh, in their in their religion, their religious thinking is much like Aristotle would have. That it's, those virtues are something that we must attain. 
Yeah, yeah. Right. And, and, and instead of God, too. But, right. but, yeah. Yeah. but right. theologically, it's something only God can do. Right. Yeah. But but we still, well, I'll get I'll get to that point in a minute. Mm -hmm. But, I but think within. Because, I think because it's man trying to reach of God instead of God reaching down to man. Well, we're going we're to get to some of this. Yeah. <laughs> but the reason I bring up the catechism is that it's, it's just pages and pages of questions and answers. Okay. Like, you know, it, it does it has to do with Christian living, theology, etc., etc. So one of the questions in, in all of these catechisms is, what is the purpose of man? And these catechisms have a very succinct answer. The purpose of man is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. Okay? So, so we, we each have the same purpose, which is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. So our lives, as we move towards excellence, should be glorifying God, right? Mm -hmm. You know, with our habits, etc. This should be, <clears throat> that's the direction we should be going. So, um, that's another uh, foundational idea to a whole class like this is what our purpose is. Okay, and if we embrace the idea that our purpose is to glorify God, that helps us in many of our decision making, right? Mm -hmm. Because should I, should I get up and go to work today or should I lay around? Well, which, which one is going to glorify God more? Probably going to work. Um, I'm saying that to retirees, too. <laughs> um, so human excellence occurs only when we glorify God, which is our purpose. Okay, so we're not going to, we're not going to achieve excellence in our lives if we're not glorifying God at the same time. Okay? Would you say honoring God and glorifying God the same thing? Uh, well, I, I, I guess they're very similar. Um, um, could you? I, I, I mean, could you rephrase that and say your purpose is to honor God? Is that the same thing? I think, I think it's. I think it's close it, enough. Okay. There is a nuance. Yeah. There, okay. there is a nuance. Uh, it's not the same thing. Giving one honor is giving them a place or a status. And regardless of the person, it's kind of like <clears throat> if you have a badge, you give deference to the badge, not to the person. That's the spirit that he said, honor your father and mother that your days may be long upon the land that the Lord thy God giveth thee. This is the first commandment with promise. That is different than giving glory. Okay. Being glorified is, is I guess way when I different. thought honor, it was putting him at the highest. I wasn't thinking a badge. It, it's giving them a, a place of respect. Right. Is honor. Honor. It, it is not. It, it is not promise. It's not glorified. Glorify is more of a worship, yeah. more of a bowing down, more of a oh. you're first. And, and you are worthy uh, to, to be worshipped. Oh, okay. See, see okay. And, and see, and just because, you know, see, he wouldn't say honor your mother and father and, and you worship them. No, okay. that's wrong. You know, yeah. you give them, okay. you give yeah, them a, yeah. a place of yeah. respect. Okay. And I was so we give God so a place of respect, but he, he is do so much more. He's the only one that we should worship. Should worship. Honoring God oh, okay. is an unselfish act. Yeah, there you go. It's an unselfish oh, act of, uh, of, uh, of obedience, of, uh, of uh, putting someone else far above yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, what does the end of the Lord's labor. Prayer say? Glory and honor and... Um, no. 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 Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> honor is much like virtue. Honor is much like the virtue he's talking well, about. Well, I understand, but I'll just say that they're different. Yeah, well, I, I know if they're that. different, but we're, I, I got that from somewhere. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. Something well, to meditate. Sorry. Yeah. Well, see, and that's why they list them mm -hmm. separately, because they are different. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. 
Okay, no, that's fine. That clears it up. Yeah. Uh, okay, so one of the one of the stories that I have on the recommended reading list is Ricky Tiki Tavi. Okay. Anybody yeah, familiar with that story? Okay. Here's the quick summary. So, um, uh, Rudyard Kipling wrote a compilation of stories called The Jungle Books. Okay. And uh, Disney made a movie. And uh, the the story about and these these stories kind of stand alone. So so the, the story about Ricky Tiki Tavi takes place in India, and this little young mongoose got caught in a flood and he gets washed up on the bank, um, in in this garden where a uh, English family lives. Okay. So so Ricky Tiki Tavi uh, becomes the protector of the garden, and. Kipling is very specific. He said, R Kipling writes that he, which is the mongoose, knew that all a mongoose's, a grown mongoose's business in life was to bite and eat snakes. Okay? So here's a case where little Ricky Tiki Tavi knew his purpose. Okay? So it, see, it's, and this is key to the whole story that the mongoose fulfills his purpose in the story, okay? Um, now, here's a, a quick intro uh, for next week. So when we, uh, when we think about an animal, okay, animals function by instinct, right? Uh, no one teaches that bird how to build a bird nest. But they're able to do it. Okay, and and likewise, in our, in our in, what's that? There's a creator that created them that they will do this. You know, this is the purpose. Right. And so so he puts this into each of these animals that they they act the way they act by instinct. Okay, and and so we get we get bird nests and we get a lot of good things out of that. But but also the engineering. I I marvel. You know I look at a nest and how you, you know, can't do it yes and how they arrange it you know mm -hmm. they put the feathers yeah. in here right. and then, yeah. so in instinct is a very powerful thing That's but a lot of a lot of a, a lot of animal instincts are not so good for us like for example have you ever had a raccoon in your trash can yes <laughs> and they make a mess so an animal operating by instinct he turns over your trash can, and the next day, does he regret that he did that to you? Yes. No, he does not regret. No, he doesn't. No, yeah. no. Well, he doesn't. Well, the one that Gerald ran into out of the park. No, we're just talking about. Yeah. The, we're yeah. just talking about generic well, right Well, he would get stuck in the, the metal one, and Gerald would look over and see him, and he would go, you know, like. Lift me out of here, why don't you, you know, like he's like, right. like that was his father. But, but, uh, <laughs> but, but your average raccoon will rummage through your trash can, make a mess, and he doesn't clean up after himself. No. Because he's, it's strictly an instinctive behavior to rummage through trash, and, and that's where he's going to get his supper, because that's the easy way to do it. Okay? So that's instinctive behavior. So we're going we're gonna to put that down here. The ground level. Now, God, uh, He has providence. Okay, He's all knowing and all powerful, and uh, you know we we have hymns about this. Um, he leadeth me, O blessed thought, O words with heavenly comfort fraught. Okay, so God has providence, and He He oversees this world, and we rely on His providence for our care, right? And that's Lord's Prayer, give us this day our daily bread. Okay, so that's just part of our Christian life. Animals are down here, instinct, God's <laughs> up here with, with providence, and we're in the middle. Okay, and this is, we operate with prudence. Okay, and so the idea behind prudence is... I'm not so sure that we started that. Humanity in general starts out with prudence. 
Well, it's a virtue that we need to learn. Yeah, we need to learn. We, but we have, but see, the, the animal cannot function any other way. It, it can't, it can't become human, right? Mm -hmm. But we are human and we have this capacity to, A, think about what we did, and we can project ahead, if I do A, B, and C, this will happen. Whether that's a, a positive thing that we're thinking about doing or a negative thing that we're thinking about doing, okay? So part of, this is, this is an important idea to embrace because we, we need to realize that we, if we let ourselves, we'll devolve down to operating by instinct. You've met people like this. Lord of the flies, exactly. Ones were close to me. <laughs> um, so, so that, I mean, they, they write books and make movies about how people devolve in their behavior. Okay, and so that we, a we want to guard against being pulled down to that, and so we want to elevate ourselves, right? And so, so Admiral McRaven writes a book about people who have done good things, and and something that we should model ourselves after. Okay, so so we want to we want to. We want to rise as far as we can. Not that we'll, you know, we, we cannot become God. We cannot be God, understand God. But but we should strive to elevate ourselves. You can only evolve from one or the other, either from your instinct, what you is what you don't know, or from information or what you do know from experience. Right, right. And so and so that's part of what the idea of behind studying the virtues is. Okay, we want to. We want to learn what courage is so that we can exercise courage in our life. Mm -hmm. We want to... Just like what Jesus said, be ye holy for I am holy. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we want to learn what prudence is so that we can become more prudent and make better choices. Um, and again, we are our habits. Okay, so uh, I just stumbled upon a, a quick little story that I'll read to you. Um, and this is a book by a, a fellow named William Madison, and he gives an example. Now this this is a little paragraph about habits, okay? And and uh, uh, he writes, "Your friend Joe continually has the capacity and opportunity to donate money to those less fortunate, and yet constantly refuses to do so." Joe develops the habit not of generosity, but of stinginess. Okay? That's the pattern of his life, this habit. We would call Joe cheap, and though he might perform an occasional act of generosity, such as picking up a tab for his friends at a restaurant, we would be surprised if he did so and say, that's not like Joe. Okay? Because we have, we have observed Joe, our friend, is, is stingy. So if he does, if he does a, a generous act, well, that's not like him because we know his habits. Of course, if Joe began to perform generous acts repeatedly, eventually we would stop saying it was out of character and call Joe generous. But that would entail first overcoming his habit of stinginess and then repeating generous acts to ingrain the new habit, and eventually, and ideally, doing generous acts with pleasure and promptness. Okay, so part of the idea here is that uh, this fellow, William Madison, points out that we can change our habits. You know, we are not, because we're not controlled by instinct, we can make choices. Something yeah, has changed. Change change uh, well, I'm sorry, go ahead, Doc. Something has to change. That's it, you know, like meet, meet, you meet the Lord and He has changed you. Yeah, right, he right. Right. Yeah, you yeah. completely. Go ahead, Thanks, Brad. I'm saying the same thing. We can change, but something, habit 
is uh, evolves from a path of least resistance for most people. Okay, well, path of least resistance and create habits. Most have, have, have habits. Habits are bad habits. But uh, okay, uh, well, I've got a couple other little items to read to you, which hopefully will will sort of uh, round out this whole okay. idea about habits. Mm -hmm. Okay, now. Uh, we studied uh, mere Christianity a while back, and this is what C.S. Lewis said. And this this particular item uh, really is significant, so I'm going to uh, uh, emphasize this quite a bit. Every time you make a choice, you are turning the central part of you, the part of you that chooses into something a little different than it was before. So the idea he's, he's promoting is that the act of a choice actually changes us. I'll continue. And taking your life as a whole with all your innumerable choices, all your life long you are slowly turning that central thing into either a heavenly creature or into a hellish creature. Okay, so Lewis is saying that as we make choices repeatedly, it changes us. One way or the other. One way or the other. Either into a creature in harmony with God and with other creatures and with itself. Notice the idea of elevating, you know, that's elevated talk, right? or else into one that is in a state of war and hatred with God and with its fellow creatures and with itself. Okay, that's, that's moving down toward that instinctive behavior. To be one kind of creature is heaven, that is, it is joy and peace and knowledge and power. To be the other means madness, horror, idiocy, rage, impotence, and eternal loneliness. Each of us at each moment is progressing to one state or the other. Okay, and see how consistent that is with the, the story about the two wolves? Okay, when I, when I make a, a positive choice, it changes me. Or to, you know, I'm, I'm going to feed the good wolf. And he's going to eventually defeat the bad wolf. Okay, so, but, um, um, I really embrace this idea that these repeated choices that we make actually change us. But it's, it's that act of will to make the good choice that begins to change us for the better. Okay? And I'm thinking this might be consistent with your own observation of life. Well, Aristotle was a deep thinker. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And he constantly evaluated what he did by what he thought of the thought process. Mm -hmm. He very well could have been the one that wrote, if you are not what you think you are, you are what you think. You get that? Yeah. If you are not what you think you are, you, you are, are what, what you, you think. think. Right, and that's very consistent with, with what C.S. Lewis just said. Yeah. That we, our, our thinking changes us, mm -hmm. okay? Now, I stumbled upon another little story which, which uh, serves to illustrate the same idea, although this the story is kind of purely negative. Although I, you know, in C.S. Lewis, you know, he presents us with there's a negative side and a positive side. So, so here's the the uh, and this little story comes from Elementary Moral Lessons by Marcellus Cowdery. Now I I stumbled upon this book, and. Uh, it was written in the 1850s, and so it has all these little stories with some questions and answers to go with them. You know, it's made for like elementary school. But in the preface to this book written in the 1850s was, you know, there's a decline in our society, so I'm going to, you know, the purpose of this book is to, uh, you know, elevate, you know, and, and train our children. Because we don't teach anymore the kids about, you know, what... It right. supposed so, to learn. So, so people were concerned about children's education in the 1850s. <laughs> and, and so things, you know, we still have the same, the same thoughts about this. Anyway, back to the story. 
There was once a farmer who had a son named John, a boy very apt to be thoughtless and careless as to doing what he was told to do. One day his father said to him, John, you are so careless and forgetful that every time you do wrong, I shall drive a nail into this post to remind you how often you are naughty, and every time you do right, I will draw one out. His father did as he said he would, and every day he had one and sometimes a great many nails to drive in, but very seldom one to draw out. At last, John saw that the post was quite covered with nails, and he began to be ashamed of having so many faults. Again, you see the two wolves, mm -hmm. you know, same, same thing. He resolved to be a better boy, and the next day he did so good, he was so good and industrious that several nails came out. The day after, it was the same thing, and so on for a long time. A long time, notice the idea of a habit here. Till at length only one nail remained. His father then called him and said, Look, John, here is the very last nail, and now I am going to draw this. Are you not glad? John looked at the post, and then, instead of expressing his joy, as his father expected, he burst into tears. Why, said his father, what's the matter? I should think you would be delighted. The nails are all gone. Yes, sobbed John, the nails are gone, but the scars are yet there. Mm -hmm. oh, they go in. So it is, dear children, with your faults and bad habits, you may overcome them, you may by degrees cure them, but the scars remain. Now take my advice, and whenever you find yourselves doing a wrong thing, or getting into a bad habit, stop it at once. For every time you give up to it, you drive another nail, and that will leave a scar on your soul, even if the nail should be afterwards drawn out. Mm. I think that's. I think that story is just a little bit too negative. I mean, I, I think. Uh, I mean, I think sense. there are some scars, but I think there's. Uh, you know, we we can recover. Can I make myself do something I do not want to do in order to? get the results that I do want to have. Yes, I say you can. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Give an example of, of what Oh, I know. That's just something that I shared with my Sunday school class. Okay. It's something to motivate you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If if you ha if you're having a hard time, just think about it. What results do I want to have? And then can I make myself do the things to get that result? Right. And yes, you can. Right, and among the motivations are, well, if I stop doing this and begin doing that, would that glorify God more? Mm -hmm. You know, that becomes a, a criteria for helping us make these choices. Yes, it right. requires self-discipline. It does self require self-discipline. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's one of the fruits of the spirit, yeah. and 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 we're gonna we're gonna have that, but it's gonna be presented from a slightly different way. It's it's the uh, somewhat it's the virtue of diligence, which counteracts the vice of sloth or laziness. Okay, which is a work ethic. Which is which is work ethic, and again, see these are. A lot of these things are not going to be terribly new to you, but you know we've this is it's it's packaged a little bit for us. Okay, uh, time check. Six fifteen. Six fifteen. Okay, so we're just about yeah because we we start next door at six thirty. Okay, so that pretty well. With, uh, like with that laziness, you know, God was a worker. He worked for six days and rested in seven days. That's what you should. You know, also do. I mean, yeah. he didn't play around with it. Oh, well, uh, he created. You know, it. Right. Okay. So, um, <laughs> any any other thoughts on this this intro? Going about the nail holes. Yeah. When you think about that, changing bad habits to good habits. Right. We can we can change the bad habits to good habits, but it doesn't always change the circle the uh, consequences. Sometimes true. there's still yeah. some bad Very consequences. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Left behind. Very true. But. Changing to good habits, good thoughts, gives us a godly perspective mm -hmm. on those circumstances. 
Right. They look completely different. Right, right, right. 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 Yeah. Okay, so uh, next week is the uh, virtue of prudence. Okay? Just what? Prudence. prudence. Okay, think, and think of prudence as practical prudence. wisdom. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, the, the lots of proverbs about uh, about promoting wisdom. Mm -hmm. And and we focus somewhat on on the practical wisdom. That is one of the deepest thoughts for me in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Is that wisdom can only come from mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And everything else is what? Yep. Uh, but but and it opens up a lot of Right, mm -hmm. but again, see, see, we we are made in the image of God, right? So therefore, we can we can think forward about the consequences of our actions, right? And so there's a, uh, uh, you know, it's it's very much a thinking virtue, right? Okay, but um, we have the ability to do that, yeah, because yeah. we were created in their own image, right? right. So we have a conscience to be able to do that, right? And so. So we'll talk about uh, about uh, prudence next week, what it is, and again, part of the idea of prudence is to help us see what the good action is that we should be taking. You know, it's it's deducing. Yes, I should. This is a good thing to do. This is not a good thing. Okay. 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 So um, I don't think I. Yeah, I don't have a, a specific uh, uh, story about uh, prudence, but uh, the, the first couple of, the, the first few stories that are up, like if you want to find them on gutenberg.org, then, then you could read those and, and we'll get ready for uh, other things. Because after prudence becomes, we, we go to temperance, okay? Okay, any, uh, any other thoughts? I just want to share one more thing. If y'all will Google Make Your Bed by Adam McRaven, it's a very short uh, your bed. speech. It's really good. It's mm -hmm. really uh, good. By who? By William McRaven, Admiral McRaven. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Make Your Bed, it's, it's very good. Yeah, and, that's, uh, and that goes to diligence. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, that's right. And, and, and good habits too. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's all good. Okay. Well, I, I thank you for coming. And um, so, what we'll what we'll do is, um, I'll give this to uh, Ryan, and he'll put it on the church's Facebook page, uh, YouTube channel. So, uh, and part of the idea behind that is that, uh, you know, if someone missed this week, let's point them towards towards the video. Mm -hmm. Get a little background. Yeah, we, we visited with uh, a couple of people that no longer able to come. Yeah. And Malcolm and Linnell, whatever yeah. their last name is. Cass. Cass. Yeah. Yeah. Cass. Yeah. 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 And they know that they watched all these shows on oh, the okay. computer. Oh, okay. really like to get past and all that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. We'll make technology our friend. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's, uh, we'll dismiss with a word of prayer and uh, go to prayer meeting. Father in heaven, Lord, I thank you for our time together, and uh, I thank you too, Lord, that you call us to uh, to excellence. You call us uh, to uh, to lift our eyes up and to uh, to, look, to look at the better things in life. And I pray that you'll guide us towards that end. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Yeah. Uh, explain that uh, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, when the lamb is born, it's mm -hmm. taken away so they won't have any blemish. Oh. 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 Oh.